It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lusaka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. You listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Bang. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lusaka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Tonight on FBC News, National Federation Party marks 50th anniversary. Fiji Women's Crisis Centre says rural women are still suffering. And Fulton College plans to become more inclusive. Hello and welcome to FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. The country's oldest political party, the National Federation Party, has reached a historical milestone having existed for 50 years now. Party President Raman Pratap Singh says the party was faced with the threat of closing down early this year under the political party registration decree. Christopher Chand reports they have also announced that they will not form any coalition in next year's elections. Formed in 1963, the party has played a significant role in Fiji's political development, with prominent leaders such as A.D. Patel, Siddiq Koya and Jairam Reddy, NFP was formed as a result of the struggles of cane farmers. An occasion such as this is a time for reflection and stock taking to see where the NFP has come from and where it is now heading. As I said, we are now at a critical juncture in our history again. The NFP has survived the traumas and turbulence of the recent decade despite the great provocations and challenges it faced. However, despite boasting a rich history, they have struggled to win a single seat in the last three elections. Oh, I agree, since 99 we have suffered. I think more because the people uh, did not comprehend our vision at the time. But I'm happy to say that there is change in the, uh, in the opinion of the people, the change in their views, and we are uh, we are confident that the people are going to come back. The NFP is part of the United Front for a Democratic Fiji, along with the Social Democratic Liberal Party and rivals the Fiji Labour Party. But it will not form an alliance with political parties to contest the elections. The challenges would be to, to, take, uh, to be in parliament and hopefully be part of government. So next year provides a challenge and I'm happy to say that the party is ready uh, to take part in, uh, in the challenges that are going to be. If the 1999, 2000 and 2006 elections are anything to go by, the NFP will have more than just an uphill battle heading into elections in September next year. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Rural women in Fiji are most vulnerable to violence by their intimate partners, says the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre. According to the NGO, these women don't have access to the right services to lodge their complaints or seek counselling. Ritika Pratap reports. A survey by the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre reveals that only 5% of women living in rural areas are able to access adequate services. Though more women are coming forward to report the abuse and violence, Fiji Women's Crisis Centre coordinator Shamima Ali believes it's just the tip of the iceberg. Though things have improved in their reporting, they feel safer, they know a bit more about laws and so on, and there are a lot more support services through the zero tolerance um, areas and through uh, the zero tolerance programs and through other faith-based organizations doing the work, we're doing our work. There is a lot more awareness and they are coming forth a lot more. Uh, but still, there are many, many, over 90% of women who are not coming forth, and those are the women that we need to reach out to. The FWCC has centers in Suva, Lambasa, Nandimba, and Raki Raki, but Ali says there is also the issue of women's poverty and restrictions put on them that stops them from traveling to lodge complaints. 
what is coming out is the lack of, uh, you know, the excess of services, lack of services available for them, lack of knowledge about what services are uh, available, um, a lack of knowledge on uh, the new legislations. So we make it our business to ensure that they, that they know about these laws and so on. Shamima Ali says the police force, social welfare ministry and health centers are working hand in hand with them. However, not all staff are adequately trained to handle such matters. Well, services leave a lot to be desired because if you have a police force, there are only a couple of police officers there, whether they are trained on gender and sexual assault and domestic violence, whether they know the laws, whether they have DVROs present there, you know, in there so that women can access DVROs. These are domestic violence restraining orders and things like that. So those are the things we need to look at. And then their access to justice issues in terms of uh, legal aid. A lot of forms to be filled. You know, for everything they have a lot of forms to be filled. So you need people who assist them in that. The centre will launch its latest national survey tomorrow that explored the prevalence, incidents and attitudes to intimate partner violence in Fiji. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Rural women who were part of the South Pacific Business Development Programme were praised last night for their efforts. The SPBD brought together members from all over Fiji for its Women of the Year Award. Abisala Medoka reports. These women, mostly from the provinces of Naitasiri, Tailebu, Rewa, Nanronga and Nandi, have now been part of the program for years. Their small businesses have flourished through the SPBD programs and they are now able to provide for their families. With the theme Enlightening Lives Through Women Entrepreneurs, these women were reminded of the challenges and difficulties they could face as they grow. Being an entrepreneur is not an easy path or an easy undertaking. In fact, it can be a very lonely and a very difficult path. But it is a path and an undertaking that builds great habits of virtue. Casa Grande also reminded the women to have faith and be dedicated to what they do. The life of an entrepreneur requires long hours, doing perhaps unglamorous work. It requires thoughtful analysis of developing products and services that will be attractive to paying customers. It requires being diligent, maintaining one's efforts, and not squandering away opportunities for the sake of some short-term fun. The South Pacific Business Development Program now has over 5,000 members. It opened for business in Fiji three years ago. Api Solome Dhoka, FBC News. Facilities at Fulton College in San Beto Nandi will be more user-friendly for people living with disabilities. College principal Dr. Stephen Caro says this is a significant step forward for the institution. Api Solome Dhoka reports. The Higher Education Commission is keen to see how Fulton College in Sambeto caters for people who have disabilities. Today education needs to be much more inclusive and uh, the Higher Education Commission want to know what facilities we've got for people like wheelchairs. This current property would make that very, very difficult. As finishing touches are put into this facility, Dr. Caro says being all-inclusive is a step in the right direction. On the new property, we're doing everything we can to make sure that that building is going to be uh, available for inclusive education and uh, this will be a significant step forward in uh, higher education in Fiji. Talks are underway with former landowners in Thai level with regards to what will happen with these facilities which will close down soon. We're in discussions at the moment and I'm not at liberty to be able to, to comment on those discussions. The insecurity in land tenure is one of the main reasons for relocating. The school was first established in 1935 at Mburesale, Novalau, before moving to Korobo in Teilevu and now relocating to Sambeto in Nandi next year. The new Fulton College in Sambeto will open its doors on February 12th next year. Apisolome Dhoka, FBC News. Coming up, new USB production highlights the threat of climate change. Today FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lombasa! 
My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. I love Today FM because they play the awesome, awesome song. A lot of us they love Today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vunivar Lampasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Bulan 2 saya betul FM. En nampak dua yang rakyat rakyat. Bula FM nampak dua inosor. Gue etawa ke buat sekolah sama bula FM lah. Bula FM nampak dua korbu. Bula FM nampak dua esawa. Bula FM nampak dua lotok kambula. Nampak dua nampak bula FM memba. Bula FM nampak dua enosor in Singapore. Kalau tali tak ada warung yang nampak bula FM lotok. Ali akar warung yang bula FM nampak dua enosor. Bula FM nampak dua enosor. Welcome back to FBC News. The latest production by the Oceania Centre for Arts depicts the dangers of climate change and the resulting rise in sea level. The musical drama by students of the University of the South Pacific at the Lodala campus points out the threat to our small Pacific island nations. Neelam Raj with the story. The show is called Moana, the Rising of the Sea, a performance filled with passion, fear, anger and pain that the Pacific Islanders face when being forced to live behind their homes and along with it their culture, traditions and most important of all, their identity. Professor Villisoni Heronico, the executive producer, says the show uses the performing arts of the Pacific to bring attention to the most pressing issue for many small Pacific Island nations. Particularly uh, when you are forced to um to abandon the things that really matter to you, for example, who you are, uh, your culture, abandon your land, and even abandon the, the bones of your ancestors uh, because you have no choice. He added that perhaps there is a way out of what appears to be an inevitable outcome. Uh, I think we all need to uh, work together and not uh, uh, just be thinking about uh, the environment um, and what uh, we can do to exploit it for ourselves, but we need to be thinking about the future. The production, which held its first performance at USP, is funded mainly by the European Union. Neelam Raj, FBC News. The Ratu Kandavu Levu School All Boys Association is involved in another project for the boarding school. The RKS All Boys raised over a million dollars to fund the school church a few years ago. Now they're working on income-generating ideas. Api Salamidoka reports. Former students of Ratu Kandavu Levu School met at Ratu Sukuna Memorial School in Nambua to raise funds for an association building. Former students from around the country and those from abroad arrived at the fundraising to help in the project. I think next year we will make a decision. We are looking around. Uh, uh, there are two options. We might, uh, I believe if we put our heads together and work together, we will achieve whatever we want. Students of Londoni have always broken barriers when we work together. The RKS old boys have always been looking for meeting venues when the association started back decades ago. Today they aim to have one of their own. It's a, it's a place where we can meet. The RKS Old Boys Association has already collected over $30,000. Apisolo Medoka, FBC News. The Morris Brothers High School Old Scholars held a Christmas event in Nandi last night to raise funds for a new school project. The Morris Old Boys managed to raise close to $14,000, which will go towards a rugby development program for the school. Funds raised will go towards developing a rugby academy at the high school. Imari Stolboy says this initiative will develop their students and is more than just about playing rugby by implementing important values into children. Prime Minister Vorenge Baini Marama was the chief guest at last night's event. He highlighted government's role in providing free education for all. In my recent uh, visits around the country, I've also stated that any nation that is willing to invest almost a fifth of its national budget in education is a nation that takes education seriously. 
Miss Cook Islands, Terita Napa, is Miss South Pacific 2013. Napa won the pageant ahead of nine other contenders in Honiara, Solomon Islands last night. Miss Tonga was crowned the first runner-up, while Miss Samoa came second, and the third spot was taken up by Miss Solomon Islands. Miss America and Samoa came fourth and was also awarded the National Tourism Award. Fiji did not place in the finals of the pageant. Coming up in sports, police hold special church service after Sukuna Bowl victory. Deski Dharkan Radio Fiji 2 is number one in Singatoka. My name is Sakhi Nivasi. My name is Prem Chandra. Deski Dharkan Radio Fiji 2. My name is Deski Dharkan Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is Deski Dharkan Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is number one in Singatoka. My name is Radio Fiji 2. My name is Radio Fiji 2. हम नन्नूपुर की की रहता है और हम रेडियो फिजी टू हरदम सुनता है हमें रेडियो फिजी टू सुनो बहुत अच्छा लगे आप भी रेडियो फिजी टू सुनो देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू Tali tak nak radio Fiji One, nampak orang yang nampak orang. Aduh, tali tak nak borong orang radio Fiji One, singkat orang boleh tengok stesen ni alamatu. Aduh, tali tak boleh buat nak borong orang radio Fiji One, stesen ni alamatu elok tak? Aduh, tali tak boleh buat nak borong orang radio Fiji One ni mandi, nampak stesen ni alamatu. Aduh, tuh korbo. Untuk baru mula benda stesen ni alam tua, na radio Fiji One. Untuk baru orang na radio Fiji One, na stesen ni alam tua, na bandu itu telem. Na radio Fiji One, na dua ribu tiga puluh enam ni biar nanti. Welcome to FPC Sports. The Fiji 7 side showed flashes of individual play in their opening three matches of the South Africa 7s, which could count against them in the second round tonight. The side cruised through their pool, beating Australia 26-5, downed France 27-7, before fighting off a stiff challenge from Scotland, winning 29-12. Because they, they reverted so much to individual play, so typical of past performances. It was a bit fortunate that they managed to gather their uh, uh, rhythm at the end and uh, they came back strongly and uh, once w they got a nose in front, there was never a doubt that they were going to win against what was a questionably strong side. Fiji will now take on Samoa at 11.40 p.m. tonight. Should the side win this match, they will face either Kenya or New Zealand in the semis. The Fiji police rugby team was hosted to a Thanksgiving church service at the Vodafone Arena in Suva today after retaining the Sukuna Bowl. It was a great opportunity for the team to acknowledge the support of both the forces throughout the sporting week. Also attending the service was Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama and senior brass of the two defence forces. Today's service was a thanksgiving uh, service for the whole uh, uh, week. It is uh, totally uh, a get-together of the two uh, friendly forces, the Fiji military forces at Namua and uh, the Fiji police force, just to thank God for being with us. And uh, also for the week as we celebrate uh, Ratu Sukuno Day with the two forces in our families. Police defeated Army 25-24 to retain the cover at Taanoa, with replacement fullback Isoa Donaldson knocking over the winning penalty to ensure the Sukuna Bowl returned to Nasova. The Chris Science National Club Championships kicked off this morning in the Southern and Western Divisions. Clubs came out determined to top their pools and make it to the second round of competition. In the Southern Division, the presence of district reps has certainly boosted the chance of some teams. Now, Lokia United of Rewa looks to be an informed team led by Rewa players Setaraki Hughes and Savenada Nakalevu, while in the West, 4R Electrical Bar were a class above the rest. District uh, reps will certainly be informed uh, in, uh, by having game time, regular game time during off season and uh, uh, even the premier teams they have uh, uh, equal opportunity to showcase their talent with the super premier reps, my, uh, main reps. The finals of the national club championships will be played at Prince Charles Park in Nadi next weekend. The Chess National Championships continue today at Fasenuk House in Suva. A host of upcoming junior players stamped their mark in the four-day tournament, much to the delight of the Fiji Chess Federation. Chalendau Zaka Zaka reports.
It was game on for local men and women chess players. A positive sign for organizers was the performance of junior players, particularly with the Nanjing Youth Olympics coming up next year. The level of chess in Fiji, we can see it, it has gone up because uh, one of the 12 year old kids uh, we trained, uh, a young boy, Manash Farid, uh, he started coming to the coaching classes in 2012 and uh, he did very well in the zonal in May where he played against international opponents and he caused an upset against Solomon Islands and Australia there. A bright future lies ahead for this second form yet sent primary school student who has enjoyed his performance so far, notching three wins from four games. Because I'm playing against all the competitors and I'm the youngest here, so I'm quite happy. Meanwhile, women's defending champion Hilda Wukikomoala received some stiff challenge from other competitors. Uh, the majority of them have improved greatly. Apart from the Youth Olympic Games, officials will also use the tournament as a selection ground for the Chess Olympiad in Norway next year. Tsalendo Kavak, FBC Sports. Sunday afternoon drives in Suva took a special meaning for some local sports car enthusiasts today. A group of drivers came out in tribute to Hollywood star Paul Walker, who died in a car accident on November 30th. These drivers say they are big fans of Walker and wanted to show their support to his family in their own special way. Walker was one of the key actors in the movie franchise Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Showers were experienced over most places today. Despite the showers, temperatures were pretty high in most places. Suva and Savu Savu topped the chart with 31 degrees. Tomorrow's forecast is for cloudy conditions and showers over most places. There will be some sunshine in the west early morning though. Now, as for the further outlook, occasional showers and few thunderstorms over most places are expected. The headlines once again, National Federation Party marks 50th anniversary and confirms it won't form a coalition for the 2014 elections. Fiji Women's Crisis Centre says rural women are still suffering from domestic violence. And Fulton College promises more inclusive education at its new site in Sambeto Nandi. Now for this week's poll question. We're asking, can Fiji win the 2013-2014 IRB World 7 Series? Visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj, or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. That's news for today. I'll be back again next weekend. Be sure to join Jackie Spate and the team from tomorrow evening. Mirchi FM Mirchi FM, FM is hot Best sound, best music Mirchi FM rocks and record Nani ka number one station Mirchi FM Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is number one in nursery Mirchi FM is hot We are listening to Mirchi FM Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is hot